all the things that you have done. My gaze was riveted all the on the fires of hell. Let you cry. Giant orange flames with a selfless love to receive you Christ. All. For the kingdom you gave your all. You're not living for other lives until you know Jesus you Christ. Taught. How shall they believe if they haven't heard? The broken heart you give in. He crucified all of them on the cross and paid back. The bothered mind you really saved That's what I want, that spiritual healing. Amada. For your then kind I can settle down in my own country. Die. Never cross the boundary. We say thank you. Thank you for giving your all the sacrifice of love. Thank you. We say thank you for yielding his call and teaching us in his way. the things that you have done all the souls you led to Christ the selfless love you showed to all for the kingdom you gave your home in 1908 in South Africa there was a great plague that killed many people. The people were so afraid of this disease that they refused to touch or bury their loved ones who had died. A brave young missionary from America took up the challenge to bury the dead and host proper funeral rites for them. The doctors and other missionaries warned him not to, but he dared them to put the saliva of the dead in his hand and watch what would happen to the germs under a microscope. They did this and found that as the saliva touched his hands, all the germs died. They repeated it and the same thing kept happening. The germs could not survive on his skin. This daring and bold missionary was John Graham Lake, who believed strongly in Jesus' healing ministry and walked mightily in it. He was a Canadian-born missionary who had been sent by God to Africa. He was known as the Apostle to Africa. His five-year ministry in South Africa brought about what was described as the most extensive and powerful missionary movement in Africa, resulting in thousands of miracles, over a million converts, 625 churches, and over a thousand preachers. When he moved back to America in 1913, he started ministry in Spokane, Washington. He established healing rooms where people who were sick in their bodies could come to receive their healing and also trained up men to do the same. Through John G. Lake's ministry, the city of Spokane became known as the healthiest city in the world and Lake was even recognized by the mayor of Spokane and given an award to this effect. John G. Lake's journey with healing started early in his life. His parents had 16 children, but due to disease, only eight managed to leave to adulthood. Lake himself was afflicted with rheumatism growing up. In his own words, he recounts his childhood as sickness, 
doctors, nurses, hospitals, hearses, funerals, graveyards, and tombstones. A broken-hearted mother and a grief-streaking father. Lake was eventually healed of his rheumatism at one of Alexander Dowie's healing homes when he was 16 years old. At the same time he received his healing, he began to believe in Jesus. He at one point believed that men could only be healed in Alexander Dowie's ministry. His first wife, Jenny, fell terminally ill and John Lake sent a message to Alexander Dowie concerning her healing. Dowie responded via telegram, she is healed. And indeed, she was completely healthy. Although John Lake eventually knew the person of Christ and the ministry of healing that was available in the name of Jesus, Dowie's ministry remained a personal inspiration to him through his years. John Lake was deeply intimate with Christ and hungered for him all his life. He sought the Lord earnestly for nine months to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. When the Lord visited him, he experienced the grand working of the Spirit that remodeled his approach to ministry and mankind. He was overwhelmed with passion to restore lost souls to Christ. The revelation of God in him also awakened many spiritual gifts and gave him a powerful manifestation of the healing gift. He laid hands on people and could tell what organs were diseased. He went to hospitals where doctors could not make a diagnosis and diagnosed the cases and healed those who were sick. He healed many sick and taught others to do the same. He casted out devils and delivered the oppressed. Despite working thousands of miracles, he hungered for more of God. His hunger for God kept him diligent to the work of the Lord, and he saw a great outpouring of miracles. He was a successful businessman, but sold everything and gave to God's work before committing to full-time ministry. He worked hard with the heart full of fire for God. He ministered greatly in North America before he had the Lord send him to Africa in 1908. When he was on his great mission campaign in Africa, he experienced the tragic loss of his first wife and mother of his five children. But he remained committed to the work there for five years to accomplish what he was sent to do. He moved back to Washington, USA in 1913 and married a new wife, Florence Switzer, who took great care of him and his children. He ministered in North America until he passed away in 1935. John G. Lake was a man who walked in the revelation of God in man. His one and only goal in life was to bring the fullness of God to everyone. He was a man of purpose, vision, strength and character. He frequently stated that the key to heaven's power lay not in doing but in being. He felt that spirit-filled Christians should experience the same type of ministry that Jesus experienced while on earth, and that this reality could only be realized by seeing themselves as God saw them. It was with this spiritual awareness 
that John G. Lake lived his life and accomplished his early ministry. By his life and ministry, we learn that if we can only see the reality of our situation through the eyes of Jesus, we will experience a great outworking of power in our lives. To John G. Lake, the great healing minister and the apostle of Africa, we'll say a big thank you. Thank you for showing us what is possible for a man in Christ. Gracias, John Graham Lake. Gracias.